the metal voice. Today on the show, Alan? Michael Shanker. Hello. Hello, Michael. Michael. <laughs> so, we understand you've got a new uh, CD, D live DVD coming out. It's already come out on a mission. It's out everywhere now. And we recorded it in, uh, in, in uh, November 2015 in Madrid. And we were actually, it just came out of the blue. We were already putting a tour together in, in, in Europe. And halfway through, the record company wanted to do a DVD. They had an idea of making one, a special one, like a 3D listening effect. Um, I picked uh, Madrid. Uh, Paris was an option. But I always wanted to make an, an, a, a live album in, in Spain because I, they, they are fun to, you know, play for. And they were all always very enthusiastic and uh, you know and so we found this a great uh, theater in madrid and that's where we ended up and agreed to do it and uh, later i found out we couldn't even fix anything because because of the 3d listening effect you, you did put um, you know ambient mics everywhere and if you try to fix something it, you still hear the the wrong notes and so um, there was something I wanted to fix, but I couldn't, so I just left it the way it is. And, uh, but we, were, had, we had a really good night. Uh, we played well together, the audience were great, and, and, it, and it's a great result. So what everybody hears and sees on the CD and DVD, that's, that's live. That's as live as you can get. There's no edits or any uh, retouches. There's no hanky-panky, no tape, <laughs> no everything. Everything is raw and back in a very, very... Uh, to the point of you, what you hear is who we are. Uh, so Herman Rarebell and uh, Francis, they play on this uh, DVD CD that's called On a Mission, by the way. So what is, what's it like being with them in the band for a few years now? How did they get in? I was invited by, by um, Scorpions to do something in, in Greece. And, and Herman was there too, and he asked me all the time, like, let's do something together. So I ended up with Pete Way from UFO and Herman to work on the live project. Then I had material I wanted to do, make a demo. I went to the studio and asked Michael Frost if he could help me out with the guide vocals. And then when he was singing, I said, well, you can sing, why don't you sing the album? Then William Shatner, he, he, he came to the foreground, to the picture. Then we had all these great musicians uh, participating on the first Temple of Rock album. Then Robin McCauley, Dougie White was there. And then when I wanted to go on tour, Michael Foss wasn't available. So I asked Robin to help me out in America. Michael Foss did Japan. And then when it came down to do the uh, Europe, the first tour in Europe, um, Dougie White was available for that, but Pete Way got sick. And then we asked Francis to join. And, and he was more than happy. And that was the beginning of this lineup and uh, you know and we and ever since we have been touring and recording touring and recording solid for four years now the upcoming festival the sweden rock festival there's going to be the all three msg singers there's uh, gary barden graham bonnet and of course robin mccauley and so i'm starting off doing the sweden rock uh, michael schenker fest and uh, have um, gary barden robin mccauley and um, graham bonnet there and then the original Assault Attack rhythm section uh, uh, lineup with Chris Glenn and, and um, Ted McKenna, and then Steve Mann from the uh, McCauley days. And so this is the beginning of something bigger to come because I want to take things to the next level. I want to perform my past and presence with the original singers and so that the newcomers will experience the way it used to be. And so that means lesser gigs maybe, and, uh, but bigger venues, bigger shows. And so eventually what I do in Sweden Rock, I will add Temple of Rock to it and make it the ultimate. Uh, Michael, would you ever consider recording another album with Graham Bonnet? That's a possibility. Right now we are talking about, uh, we're focusing on the, on the festivals and we're, talk, we're focusing on making an album with Temple of Rock in 2017 and uh, you don't focus on too much because you cannot see anything. And so therefore you don't get sidetracked and uh, you know, when, when something happens in between, in the meantime, when something is concrete, people will find out about it. Would you ever uh, consider recording with the Scorpions again? No, I can't because I'm very disappointed in Rudolph. Uh, what I have found out about um, the, the Love Tribe bio is completely written wrong. 
when I was 23, I, I, I finished with, with UFO. I did Strangers in the Night. We had hits in 76 with uh, Lights Out and Two Out the Handle and, and Only You Can Rock Me. The Scorpions always uh, uh, copied what UFO did. But when I uh, uh, helped, uh, when Ruder found out I had left Scorpions with uh, UFO, and Matthias, who had just joined, couldn't do the album with the Scorpions to their liking, they asked me to help out. I came over, I was 23, Rudolf was already 30, and, uh, I, and when I finished my work on the Scorpions last time album, they didn't want to let me go, so they got rid of Matthias, and so they basically persuaded me to be in the, in the Scorpions uh, after the Love Drive uh, recording, and all the management in America, they could very, they were very interested in, in wanting to sign the Scorpions, but you know, I start. I put on my, my my black and white suit and my black and white guitar and started touring. After two weeks, I just couldn't do it. I, I ran away and I was too shy to confront them. I just couldn't do it. My brother found me. He called me back. He cried on the phone. It was so embarrassing. I, I came back a second time. After the second time, I realized this is not it. I need to stop this. And I ran away again. Uh, happily, I found out that they got Matthias back, they persuaded him to come back, and, and, and that was that. Then, a little later, I get a phone call from Rudolf if I would let him um, play my black and white uh, guitar design. I said, okay, and then he also um, asked me if I would give him the um, songwriting credits for Coast to Coast. All, all the melodies were written by me, and I didn't pay attention. I was the sixth part of the Love Drive um, album, and I had a contract that, that everything was divided by six. And so when they approached me just recently for the Scorpions box, I found out that they put a bio out that was complete, a complete wrong story. It was, um, uh, I found out that there was nobody credited for what I wrote on Holiday. It's the intro to Holiday is 45 seconds long. That is the intro that I wrote. That got, nobody got credit for it. And uh, when I did, uh, and, and then Rudolf asked me to give him the melodies for Coast to Coast, and with my black and white guitar, and those two two things were the most tastiest things and easiest parts to copy because Rudolf is not really a great guitarist and he can just about play. And so, but that was uh, something, him being Schenker, now having long hair, you know, and all the managers finding out they wanted to sign the, you know, the, 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 that band, the Scorpions, where I was part of, um, I guess he figured out how we can mispresent and, and fool people and, and over the years because I didn't pay any attention until just recently, I found out that there was not a picture of me on Love Drive. There was no mention on a Holiday who wrote and, and played that intro. And of course, we were persuaded me to give him the Coast to Coast melodies. And so, um, you know, very disappointed with, with that. And, and, and uh, I must say, I am now finding out more and more uh, weird stuff about Rudolf. I have to stay away from him and I can't trust him anymore, period. Michael, I have one last question, and this goes back 30 years. I remember reading either it was Hip Raider or Circus that said you were an alcoholic and drug addict at the age of 15. Was there any truth to those rumors? If you have a talent and you are uh, uh, extraordinary, you know, um, people just love to talk about you. And, and there is so many stories. And so many stories that at some point I decided I don't want to, I don't, I don't read anything anymore. I don't want to listen to anything anymore because I'm not part of the blabbermouth world. You know, it's not my department. And the one, the, the, the simple fact is that I used to be very, very extremely shy and, and very um, stage fright. And uh, there was no way for me to be on stage without having a drink. And that's basically it. And then, of course, I'm a normal human being like everybody else who has partied in their life, and I haven't, I haven't done anything different. And uh, the difference is that, that uh, being, on the, being on the road and making it a habit to use alcohol to be able to, to be on stage, you automatically, um, you know, become, um, you, 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 you do get, have a habit of, of doing it. And, uh, and that's how it happens to most people who, who are in this vicious cycle. But the thing is, my middle years, when I decided to get away from the scene and uh, have my own recording studio and, and uh, 
and uh, my own record label and do whatever I wanted without compromises and experiment with music and also focus on personal development. I, I developed 2008, all of a sudden, I, something said to me, you want to be on stage? I said, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like being on stage. But I realized all of a sudden that I really had developed in liking to be on stage. And that is thanks to the middle years. And now I, it, it's just so much fun to be up there. Thank you very much, Michael. Well, everybody, on a mission, it's a new live DVD, CD, Michael Schenker, Temple of Rock. Uh, it, it's released now. I think you could buy it right now. Uh, everybody go pick it up. I've seen it and it looks fantastic. Also included are rehearsals, uh, interviews with all the band members, Michael and his guitars. Is there anything else in the DVD that we left out? I think that's it. Yeah, we got everything, Michael. <laughs> it was a yeah, you did it. <laughs> One of the great guitar gods, Michael Shanker. It was a privilege talking to you. Good luck on the festivals this summer. Thank you very much.